I'm James Simonelli, Twin Power Brand Manager. Uh, today we're going to introduce a new product. It's our heavy duty dresser axle kit. Um, there are two kits. One is for 02 to 07 models with a 1 inch axle and we have another kit for the 09 and later models with a 25 millimeter axle. Other than the diameter of the axle, the kits are identical. We're here with my buddy Steve from GMR Performance. Steve builds a lot of hot rods over here. This particular baby is about 190, 195 horsepower to the wheel, so um, it's up to the task of testing this kit. He's already got a chain drive conversion on it. One thing that happens with the chain drive, uh, the stock snail cam type axle gives you a very limited amount of adjustment. Also, when you get on it, it tends to torque the axle and actually loosen the chain. So not a whole lot of good. The, uh, our heavy duty axle kit gives you a lot more adjustment and it's a lot stronger. Let's take a quick look at the kit. Um, again, the axle is stainless. Why stainless? Well, it's strong. It won't rust and it won't seize to the bearings. You can see it's actually undercut in the center area. Um, the axle adjuster plates are heat treated 4140 steel and they're hard chrome plated. All the additional hardware, the castle nuts, the uh, adjuster bolts and lock nuts are all grade 8 USA made. The kit's 100% made in the USA. We also include this transfer punch for actually spotting the back of the swing arm to give this adjuster screw a place to register so this doesn't rotate and a special 45 degree drill bit. This is a, a short bit for one for clearance and again the point is actually 45 degrees it's not your average drill bit and we're going to drill to that point right there that's all you need is just a little register for it to go um, full instructions are included and um, they're pretty good comprehensive instructions they make sense they're not translated from Chinese um, I'm gonna turn it over to Steve and and let him have at it so what we've done, we've obviously already got the stock axle out. I've lifted the shocks up out of the way just to make the install easier. I'm going to literally take the directions, walk through it. We're going to apply some anti-seize to this, slide the axle in through the left side of the bike. And this stuff, as you know, guys, you don't need a lot. It's going to get <laughs> everywhere. It always does. A little here will transfer back to here. Slide this thing on in. Right? So obviously at this point, if I try to put the adjuster on here, it wanted to hit. So I wanted to show you that. Hold it into here first, so you don't have to fight with it. As you guys all know, putting these in, sometimes you've got to tweak the height just a little bit to get your axle to go through the other side. All right, so we are clear through. Take the other plate with the washer, tighten it up. Now this is just a small amount of tension. You're not torquing it at this point yet. All we're doing at this point is getting ready to do the transfer marking and to use the drill. Plate, Washer, nut. You're going to want to push this forward until it gets into the flat. This is just enough tension to keep this properly positioned. And it is crucial because you've got a flat here on the back of the swing arm and a flat on that plate. So I'm going to have to lift this up, push it forward just a little bit more to make sure that I'm in the proper position so when I go to use this transfer punch. Tell me, get this pushed all the way forward, which I've done. Slide my transfer in here. And it's a snug fit. This is going to put the mark precisely where it needs to be. I'm firmly against here. I'm going to wrap it a few times. Go ahead and release my transfer. I'm going to do this to the other side as well. Now, according to the instructions, at this point, we're going to loosen it back up, swing the plates out of the way to use their custom drill bit that they've given us, and we're told to drill 
right to the edge of that 45 degree. Everything will be lined up with the bevel. Gives this adjuster some place to center so it can't rotate. Loosen this up. As you can see, I've got a nice transfer mark right here for me to drill. Taking my time here, making sure I don't drill too far. We're almost to the proper depth. And there we are. Now, you can see the bolt. Gonna fit in there nicely. Will not allow that adjuster to rotate. Give it a firm place to push the axle back evenly. For this side, I've pulled the chain off because I want to make sure that when I do drill this with the bit here to allow this to sit in here properly that I want to be straight. I don't want to be at an angle and the chain was looking like it was going to do that. So I've slipped the chain off on this side. Obviously the shocks are still attached which allows me a lot of room under here and I can line that right up and I can go ahead and drill this side as well. Taking my time to make sure I don't drill it too deep. That's beautiful. Just take your time. There's no reason to get in a hurry. The drill bit they've given you is super sharp. Basic rechargeable drill. Put it in. At this point, we're going to go ahead and push our plates back into place. So obviously I'm pulling back on it, but it's in the spot right now and it does not want to rotate out. So that's the whole point of that exercise there is to allow this bolt to stay in a place. So not only do you have clamp load here, you have a proper position for this to push on and stay centered. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slide the chain back on and put the other side together and set the chain adjustment. James on the other side starting to assemble that. We're told to torque it to 95 to 105 pounds. Insert the cotter pin. As always guys, if the pin doesn't line up perfectly, slightly rotate it till it does. Go ahead and lower this down. One thing I want to add here, as you can see, this sits pretty tight to the shock mount, so obviously bikes that have some kind of accessory lowering kit that extends back, this kit will not work on. The kit is designed to work on a relatively stock motorcycle. We already got Loctite on the bolts here. Uh, make sure that you refer to your service manual for proper torque specs and Loctite use for these other items. So when you're making your adjustment, drop the weight off. It's going to be a little more difficult to pull on it, but it needs to be at the proper ride height. We can, make, we can take up some of the slack right now before we get there, but the final adjustment needs to be at ride height. So I have a half inch here and a 916 lock. So at this point, now I'm going to set the bike back down, check my chain slack on the other side, get it set where I'd like it to be. From there, we'll use a dowel caliper, measure it front to back, get it squared up evenly. We'll lock it down and then apply torque to our final axle nut. And keep in mind as you're, you're doing this, since it's back and forth, you are going to have to rotate back and forth to each side. You just can't run one side all the way up. So my chain is somewhere in the range of where I'd like it. So let's go ahead and take a quick measurement here. And you can do this a lot of different ways. I'm just using a dial caliper. Showing I've got 491 on this side. So I'm going to go to the other side, check it. Because as I move one side or the other, it's going to affect your chain. And you want to make sure that your tire's straight. This kit will allow you to get the tire off-centered. It's just by design. You have to adjust each one evenly to make sure the tire is running straight and true. So we had 491 on that side. I'm a little more on this side. About 528. So I'm actually going to run this one slightly backwards. If I've got 528, this side here, obviously it's my wheel currently, instead of it running true, it's currently like this. So I'm going to have to loosen this one up and run that side out just a little bit. So 
So then one thousandths right there. That one thousandths differential that wheels is as true as it's going to be. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this up. Put a torque wrench on it. Obviously we're going to apply torque to our jam bolts here. I don't want this to move. Hold it in place. Tighten that up. James is going to get the other side. So we have a spec of 95 to 105. We're going to dial it in here. We'll split it right in the middle. And we hit 100 pounds of torque. 99.9. .9. Great install. The instructions were easy. The parts worked. Drill bit, transfer punch, all very handy. One last point, like Steve did, he made sure that everything was good and snug here. You see this bike has an aftermarket wheel on it. Now the kit was designed for a stock bike. Most of the aftermarket wheels these days are very, very well made and they actually take the stock spacers and everything. But it's really up to you to determine that everything is in full crush. In other words, when this nut is tight, you don't just want it sitting on the shoulder and this wheel doing this. Any aftermarket parts on your bike or any kind of wear on the swing arm or any kind of scarring on it, um, you want to beware. So again, when all is said and done and the axle is tight, you want to make sure these things are not moving up and down and this wheel can't move side to side. And um, thanks for going through that with us, Steve. I want to thank Twin Power for an awesome product that's going to allow the, my customers to not be knocking the chain loose, which is not good for making power or safety. No one wants a chain coming off going down the highway.